question seven. So, uh, part, part one, find, one A, find the acceleration of R during its descent. So just looking at um, R, it's a little diagram here. We've obviously got its weight going downwards and the tension in the string between Q and R of 2.52. So resolving downwards the direction of the, mo the, the movement, uh, F equals MA, Newton second. So our net force is 0.45 G minus 2.52. So that's our force equaling our mass times acceleration, 0.45 times A, allowing us to work out that the acceleration is 4.2. Now remember, these are all attached to a, to a string, so they're all going to be accelerating at the same rate. Now for part B, uh, by considering the motion of Q, calculate the tension in the string PQ, so the tension in the string here. So just focusing on, on Q, so it has got a weight of 0.05 G. We've also got that tension going downwards between Q and R of 2.52 and an unknown tension going upwards, which I'm going to call T2. So again, using F equals MA, uh, again resolving downwards, the d d direction of the mo movement. So our force is downwards, 0.05 G plus our 2.52, less our tension upwards, so that's our net force, equaling our mass of 0.05, the mass of Q, times the acceleration, which we've now worked out to be 4.2. Rearranging this allows us to work out that T2 equals 2.8 Newtons. Now for part uh, two, part one, so part two, uh, we're now trying to work out the mass of P. So just focusing on P, we know we've got the mass going, uh, the weight going downwards mg, where m is the unknown, obviously g is 9.8, and the tension upwards, well this will be the same tension here as it is over here. So, um, so if we resolve upwards now, uh, our tension is the greater force, so T2 minus the weight minus mg equals the mass times the acceleration. Mass for P being um, the unknown, acceleration being what we've worked out already, 4.2. So rearranging and factorising, we can work out that m, our only unknown, equals 0.2. Now for part three, now this is quite complicated, so we're trying to work out the journey upwards taken by P. Now this comprises two journeys. Firstly, it comprises the journey upwards while R goes from um, rest to, to the ground. So if we start off by working out the distance travelled by R to the ground, that is the first part of P's journey upwards. So what do we know about this journey for R to the ground? We know the acceleration is 4.2. We're told that the time taken is 0.5. Initial speed is 0 and an unknown final uh, velocity and an unknown time. Now it is possible, uh, not an unknown time, sorry, uh, an unknown distance rather. Now we could go straight to using S equals UT plus half AT squared, that's fine. But I know that later on we're going to need to know the velocity anyway, so I'm going to break it down into two goes. First of all, using V was U plus AT. I know U is 0, I know A is 4.2, I know T is 0.5, allowing me to work out that its final velocity, the velocity of R as it hits the ground is 2.1. We'll come back to that later. I've then substituted that into S equals U plus V times T over 2 to work out the journey that R takes from rest to the ground is 0.525 metres. But as I said, we could have done that quicker, we could have just done this in one step by using s equals ut plus half a t squared but either way s equals 0.525 so that's the first part of the journey now once r has hit the ground uh, r is really out of the game so we're now just considering p and q so i've gone back and re sort of reset my my pulley diagram so i've got the weights of p and q as before but a new tension so, um, so again, using Newton's, Newton's second, we can work out two equations and solve a simultaneous equation. So first of all, for P uh, resolving upwards, we've got a net force of T minus 0.2G equaling MA equaling 0.2A. 
and secondly for Q resolving downwards we've got a net force downwards of 0.05 G minus T F equaling MA 0.05 A so two equations two unknowns we don't know T we don't know A obviously we know G so one way to solve this uh, simultaneous equation is to choose to add these two together because T take away T obviously cancels the T so adding one and two together on my left hand side I'm left with 0.05 G take away 0.2 G and on my right hand side adding these two together I get 0.25 A I obviously know that G is 9.8 so this allows me to work out that the deceleration or the acceleration is minus 5.88 meters as P is traveling upwards so um, what else do I know so I know that the acceleration for P as it travels upwards on the second part of its journey is minus 5.88 I know that at the top of the bounce so at its maximum height V equals 0 the other key thing that I know which is really important its initial speed for P for the second half of the journey is the same as the final speed of R just as it hits the ground now that's what I worked out earlier on to be 2.1 so that is the initial speed of P for the second part of its journey so I know U is 2.1 V is naught A is minus 5.88 using V squared equals U squared plus 2AS this allows me to work out distance being 0.375 meters so the total journey traveled by P that is the initial journey while R is going down of 0.525 and then this final journey where it's just P going up and Q going down of 0.375 so 0.525 add 0.375 is 0.9